Before we begin, I want to say a little prayer for our beloved Rusty. We'll miss you, little guy. And now, lock yourselves in for the most exciting film about pensions since Cocoon. Matt Mickelson plays Duncan, a.k.a. the Black Kaiser, a soon-to-be retiree in the assassin community who just wants to live out his days renting videos and drinking away his sorrows. You and me both, dude. But things take a turn for the worse when in order to save his failing company, hand cream enthusiast Blut, seriously, what the hell kind of name is Blut, decides to kill off all the old assassins so he doesn't have to pay their pensions. And if there's one thing that pisses off old people the most, it's fucking with their pensions. And maybe hip-hop. Now Duncan must fend off a team of younger, sexier assassins. And seriously, what's up with Cindy? She has, like, no skills except for eating pickles and showing off her ass. I guess that does make her an assassin? No, God! Okay, I'll shut up. No, God, please, no! We also have the best performance from Vanessa Hudgens since High School Musical. She plays Camille, a recluse who sucks at chopping wood. And we'll get into her more in a bit. But back to the beginning. Duncan is contracted by Vivian to find out who killed Michael, the guy whose boner we saw deflate in the introduction. But it's all a setup and Duncan learns he's been backstabbed. He's then tracked by the second worst group of assassins next to the Suicide Squad. Yeah. But even though the hit went wrong, the assassins make it out with Camille and Duncan is tricked by an old mentor where he is tortured in the worst imaginable way. Bagpipe music. <laughs> In the beginning, when Duncan is getting his checkup and pear tartine, we learn he has some shrapnel buried in his abdomen. Shrapnel that breaks off the night Blut uses to stab him, and that he'll later use to pick the lock and escape his imprisonment. He makes his escape through a tunnel with one of the best and ultra-violent sequences in the film. I mean, come on, just look at this. Unsure of where to go to and a young girl to save, he confines in an old lover, Jasmine, who hooks him up with laser guns. With all the assassins dead, Duncan makes his way to Blut, who fires on his own hitmen. Duncan straight up just walks in and the other hitmen rush past him and are like, He's upstairs! He makes quick work of Blut, throwing his decapitated head out the window. But here's where we get to the real twist ending. After saving Camille and arriving back home in Montana, he finds her missing. Only paper clippings about a nine-year-old girl surviving a lone gunman attack and money transfers scattered along the bed. Throughout the entirety of the movie, Duncan has been plagued with a specific event that has haunted him, and here's where it all comes together. Duncan was sent on an assassination mission based on wrong information. The people in that car shouldn't have died. So every year, Duncan anonymously transfers $200,000 to Camille as a way of redemption. Camille even calls him out on it, saying, You can't pay for your own salvation. And Duncan knows it's true. He closes his eyes and tells her not to think. Just pull the trigger. He is willing to own up to his past and get what's coming to him. After all, he's been drinking himself silly every night, haunted by that past. The irony isn't lost here either that Camille is using the same gun Duncan got her as a present and taught her how to shoot with. But the past also haunts Camille. In the end, she gives the most emotional monologue in the entire film, and we learn why she flinches every time a loud noise happens. Like here in the convenience store, and here at the diner. The loud noises remind her of that fateful day when she was nine. In the end, Camille chooses not to kill Duncan, a man who is willing to pay the ultimate sacrifice for what he has done. This is a man who is truly remorseful. Instead, Camille asks who ordered the hit, as we're off Duncan and Camille, staring into the vast Montana wilderness, perhaps to work together and take vengeance on the person who so ruined their lives. In the end, Polar is the story about loss and redemption. Camille loses her family and swears vengeance, but is redeemed when she learns that vengeance won't bring them back. Duncan redeems himself when he puts his life on the line, not only to save Camille, but when he's confronted with the past and accepts his fate. The ending is one of new beginnings for these two, and for Netflix, the beginning of a potential sequel. <laughs> But one thing this film does moderately well is create empathy for our protagonist, which is no small feat considering this is a man whose job is to kill others. The writer does this in a number of ways, first by showing us he likes animals, even buying a book to learn how to care for them, chopping Camille's wood anonymously, and even getting her a present. It's what every girl wants. Thanks. But I'll never forgive you for Rusty. I hope you enjoyed this video. What do you think of these more light type reviews? What movies or TV shows do you want me to do next? As always, make sure to leave a comment, like, and subscribe. I have more videos coming up in the horizon. And until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.